Good afternoon, Chairman Krishna Morthy and other members of the subcommittee. Apparently, quiet news days are hard to find around here lately, so I especially appreciate your presence today and your interest in this important topic. I'm David Etheridge. I'm a Virginian and for most of my life, a Presbyterian pastor, husband, father of two, and more recently, a grandfather. At the age of 56, I was diagnosed with a rare and deadly type of cancer called peritoneal mesothelioma. And because the only known cause of mesothelioma is exposure to asbestos, my doctors and others quizzed me about my potential exposure. They asked about the places that I had worked and lived and schooled, where my family members worked, which dorms more were my home during my stay at the College of William & Mary. Trying to find some point of exposure to asbestos, they asked hundreds and hundreds of questions, but found no explanation. As it turns out, my mother was a liberal user of powder, and throughout her life, she used it on herself, and when I was an infant, she used talc-based Johnson & Johnson baby powder on me quite liberally. From the day she brought me home from the hospital until the age of three, she and my older sister covered me with baby powder every time that they changed my diaper. As an adult, trusting the product that had been used on me for so long, I used Johnson & Johnson baby powder on myself for a time. And my sister also used the powder on herself, and now she has ovarian cancer, which makes you wonder, doesn't it? Since then, I've learned that whenever, uh, whenever talc is mined from the ground, it has impurities that are mined along with it, including asbestos fibers. It was these fibers that got into my system and migrated to my peritoneal cavity, which caused a slow-growing tumor that debilitated me at the height of my career. Baby powder containing talc was the source of my asbestos exposure and the cause of the cancer that will kill me. Awaiting treatment, doctors withdrew six liters of fluid from my peritoneal cavity. This they did twice so that I could breathe until the surgery. And then I came here to the MedStar Washington Hospital Center where Dr. Paul Sugarbaker performed an 11-hour surgery on me, removing my spleen my entire colon, the tail of my pancreas, and six and a half pounds of cancer. He washed my insides with a strong solution of chemotherapy and then sewed me back together for a 20-day stay in the hospital. On my 57th birthday, they sent me home with a tube in my arm for the liquid food and antibiotics that would keep me alive for the next month, after which I endured 15 weeks of chemotherapy and rehabilitation and total exhaustion. I lost 50 pounds. After six months away from the church that I served, I returned to work. But nine months later, more cancer was found, cancer that cannot be remedied or radiated or cured. So I resigned my position and the, I ended the service that I had felt called to since the age of 16, and I pr made my preparations to die. I understand that you all have friends who have cancer. I realize that 1,600 people die every single day from cancer, and I'm thankful that mesothelioma has not yet taken my life, but cancer was caused by a product that is used on the most vulnerable members of our society, infants. This is the cancer that will kill me. In fact, the people who apply these products, like my mother and sister, are completely unaware of the suffering that may occur or the death that may follow as a result of simply drying a baby's bottom. My case illustrates the sad truth that we cannot trust the talc industry to regulate itself in this matter. Since 1906, we have known that asbestos is deadly, and yet somehow it has shown up in baby powder yet again. We owe it to our nation's children, parents, and every other consumer to ensure that our baby powder is truly safe and asbestos free. Despite decades of promises to do so, the industry has not regulated itself. Therefore, you must. May God bless you 
in your work.